Good afternoon. Um, this this is the 2023 New York City Bank designation process information session. We again ask that everyone please put themselves in mute um, and we will proceed. We're delighted to have so many of you join us today. Many longstanding partners and some new potential partners have joined. Please bear with me while I run through a couple of items. First, I would be remiss if I did not remind you all of the New York State Banking Development District Program, also known as the BDD Program. The Banking Development District Program is designed to encourage the establishment of bank branches in areas across New York State where there is a demonstrated need for banking services. In recognition of the fact that banking institutions can play a very important role in promoting individual wealth, community development and revitalization. When a bank branch within one of the five boroughs qualifies for a BDD deposit, New York State deposits up to $10 million and New York City deposits up to 20 million. New York State requests the below market rate and New York City requests the treasury bill equivalent rate based upon the duration for the deposits. Next, I wanna thank you all for your interest in partnering with New York City to provide necessary banking products and services. The services required may be as simple as a plain vanilla checking account for one of our 1600 plus schools, or as complex as fiduciary accounts for those who depend upon New York City for protection of their funds. Third, New York City is always seeking better ways to service our constituents. Recognizing that banking has changed drastically, we are looking for thought leadership with our partners. Do you have an innovative idea? We would love to hear it. Fourth, this is um, the New York City Banking Commission and they, the New York City Banking Commission has three members, the mayor, the city comptroller, and the commissioner of finance. The Banking Commission also has three responsibilities. Number one, approve banks as New York City designated banks, which are the only banks that can hold city deposits. Please put yourself on mute if you are not speaking. Thank you. So, as I was saying, we approved designated banks, um, and that's what we're here for today to talk about that process. We recommend to City Council interest rates for the early and late payment of real estate taxes, and we administer the city's banking development district program, which we already discussed. The um, Treasury Division for the City of New York to, provides the administrative support to the Banking Commission. This is the first bank designation since Mayor Adams and Comptroller Lander have taken office. As with any administration, cha administration change, new eyes review all the processes and procedures. Those of, you, those of you who have been through this process with previous administrations may have noticed a few changes. Today we will discuss the application process. There will be questions and answers at the end of this discussion. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Mary Christine Jackman. I am the treasurer for the city of New York, and I also serve as the designee for the Commissioner of Finance, Commissioner Niblack. We are also joined today by Wa Tan, our banking director, and Antonio Whitaker, who most of you know, and who is our point person for, um, for collecting all of the documents that you will be sending in to us. Next, could we move to the agenda? As you can see, um, we're going to talk about the designation requirements. We're going to talk about the certified statements. We're going to talk about the designation requirement checklist. Um, Antonio is going to discuss the Axway Secure Transport instructions, and then we will open for question and answers. Um, we, we ask that your questions are succinct and um, and not extremely lengthy. If if you have other questions when we're done explaining, um, and um, if if it gets to the end of the meeting, um, please feel free to contact us. We'll be more than happy to answer any additional questions after the session. All right. 
And with that, I'm going to introduce Hua Tan. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you, Mary Christine. So let's uh, jump right into it. So um, the first slide that we want to take a look at is the bank designation requirements. So real quick, the, the role of the New York City Banking Commission is to designate which bank could hold the city's deposits. The commission is responsible for reviewing application from banks seeking to be designated and for making decisions about which bank meets the necessary criteria for holding the city's money. Um, yeah. The New York City Banking Commission designation is held biannually in odd number of years. To become designated, a bank must fulfill several documentation requirements. And the procedure and requirement for bank to apply for and maintain their designation, including submitting various financial and operational information and adhering to certain policies and regulations. The goal of the commission is to ensure that the city's funds are held in a secure and responsible financial institution that meets necessary standards for handling public money. Um, the criteria for meeting the requirement for designation by New York City Banking Commission will depend on the specific uh, requirements outlined in the rules of the City of New York Title 22 uh, Banking Commission designation requirement, which I provided a link here. Um, it's uh, readily accessible online. Um, so there are 18 requirements listed uh, aimed to ensure that the bank operates in a transparent and accountable manner and provides equal opportunity access to its service to all customers in New York City. Um, and I also provided a link here so you guys could take a look at it. Um, and again, it's on the New York uh, uh, Finance Department website, Title 22 and the Bank Commission requirements. So let me give you a, a brief uh, uh, overview of the, the requirements here. So um, you need to provide a copy of the charter, name and occupation of directors, name and titles of officers, location of offices and financial statements, provide information on executives, employees, shareholders, legal counsel, consultants and advisors with beneficial interests. Provide certificate on policy of hiring and promotion without discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, etc. Provide a certificate on uh, policy of non discrimination delivery of banking services. Provide written report on branch network activities, including open, close, consolidations, acquire, or sole branches. I'll provide certificate on policy regarding branch closing, including criteria, process, procedures, and plan for continuation of service. Provide written statement of commitment to provide 90 day notice of change in branch network, including closures and sales. Aim to ensure transparent and accountable operation, and also provide equal opportunity and access to uh, service to all customers in New York City. Um, our next slide, which is which talks about the certified statement certificates. There are five certificates in total. Um, and the process for applying for a certificate requires each bank to file all five with the Banking Commission and file three certificates with the city clerk. The three certificate needs to be filed with the city clerk on number 10, 11 and 16. The first certificate, number 10, affirms the bank's policy of hiring and promoting employees without discrimination based on various factors such as race, religion, and sexual orientation. The second certificate, number 11, uh, affirms the bank's adhering to equal credit opportunity laws and its policy of non-discrimination in the delivery of banking services to customers and outlines the step taken to implement and monitor these policy. The third certificate, number 16, details the bank's policy on branch closing, including the criteria for evaluating necessity, impact on the community, and plans for continuous service to the affected community. Uh, in addition, bank must submit a written report on their branch network activity, including information on branch opening, closing, consolidation, acquisitions, or sales, as, um, as well as financial analysis and maps of the affected area. 
Any information submitted is confidential and subject to applicable provision of law. Uh, the bank may also file a new certificate in compliance with all of the above requirement upon request or any changes in information contained in the original certificate. Um, so we had sent out a package um, last month, which included the instructions on how to get these three certificates certified with the city clerk. Um, one way was um, to, to actually contact Wendy Lopez, which is our designee at the city clerk, um, and uh, you could hand deliver the certificate with the supporting documents uh, by scheduling an appointment or um, doing an overnight service um, to them, and they'll get back to us with, with, with the original certificates. So um, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Antonio, and we could discuss the requirement checklist. Thank you, Hua. Um, can you uh, stop sharing your screen so I can share mine? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, most of you know me. Uh, my name is Antonio Whitaker. I'm the Deputy Director of the uh, Treasury Innovation PMO Office here um, at the Department of Finance uh, in the Treasury Division. Um, I have been working um, as operations staff for the Banking Commission now for eight years, so a lot of you um, if you aren't already are very tired of me emailing you and <laughs> calling you about this issue every two years, um, that will continue, so deal with it. Um, I will <laughs> share my screen here one moment. All right. Please let me know if you can't see my screen. Um, you could uh, just send um, a little message in the chat if you need me to blow it up. Um, I'm more than happy to. Okay, so, so this do. to blow it up a little, a little larger. To make yes. Little bar larger. Yes. Okay. Is that? Do you, need, you want me to blow it up some more? Is that good? Well, some of, some of our eyesight is not what it used to be. Okay, so, so let me go as let me go as big as I can. This is 130 percent. Let me just. Good. All right. okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. So as all you, um, you will all have received um, this uh, particular spreadsheet uh, in uh, in the email that um, we sent via the uh, Banking Commission mailbox uh, back on January 13th, along with copies of the five certificates. Um, and um, a copy of the designation requirements. Um, the Banking Commission um, implemented this spreadsheet um, a couple of years ago for a number of reasons. The main reason being that um, we noticed that um, uh, when mem when uh, potential uh, designees sent us their uh, designated materials, um, some of the materials may have been missing or incomplete, so we decided to create a sort of checklist for you to be able to uh, uh, go through um, all of the uh, items on the designation list and check them off as uh, you complete them. So basically what we want you to do here is just um, type in your bank name here, put in the contact info of the relationship manager for the bank, um, and as you scroll down, you'll notice that each of the items are individually numbered, and there are instructions here to tell you exactly how to check off uh, these items. So what? Um, so once you complete one of the items, what we ask you to do is to click on this box here in column E. It's a drop down menu. And once you complete that item, just click on one and you'll see that the taskbar fills up. So as you complete an item, just click on the one and the taskbar will uh, will fill up until it gets to 100 percent. Right. If you haven't completed an item, we ask you that you keep that blank or you can just click zero if you want to go back 
and it uh, and the taskbar uh, will uh, update on your progress. OK. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom here. You'll notice that for um, for those of you that have um, that participate in the banking development district program, we ask that you submit some information regarding um, the branch or branches that uh, you that you have that participate in the program. So we do ask you for uh, certain information regarding uh, those branches, and we do ask you also to put in uh, your various ratings. Now we understand that not um, that uh, some of you don't um, may not subscribe to um, all of these uh, ratings agencies, or you may not subscribe to any of them. Um, if you have a rating, uh, we have here as a drop down menu um, in the box directly underneath the name where you click on the little arrow here and you can scroll down and put in and whatever rating you have. If you don't have um, a rating um, for that, um, you can just put in a non applicable. And if there's any notes or anything specifically that you want to add, you can just put it here um, and type us a note in the notes section. Um, the very last uh, item here on the spreadsheet um, is the branch test, which is this tab directly to uh, the right, the second tab. Um, based on the uh, current uh, rules in Title 22 of the City of New York, um, the Banking Commission does um, take into account um, the number of branches uh, that a bank has within uh, the confines of New York City, and there's a specific test um, that um, is spelled out in uh, the rules that um, we need uh, to to do, and in, in order to um, in order to uh, make sure that um, you know the number of branches uh, that you have. Uh, uh, fill out certain criteria. Um, so if you click on this second uh, tab here, um, we have here um, in the top here, you need to put in um, the number of branches that you currently have within New York City. Um, for the sake of this particular process, um, the Banking Commission is only concerned about the number of branches that you have within the five boroughs, not uh, statewide. Um, we only care about the number of physical brick and mortar branches that um, you have within the five boroughs. And um, here we have a note. Um, if no branches were open or closed or are or our plan to be open within the current year, um, U0, um, not an A or TBD, only because um, any um, anything other than a numerical value will throw off uh, the formulas that we need in order to um, in order for the uh, commission to um, to fulfill that specific uh, piece of the rules, which claim that we need to um, do a calculation based on the number of branches that you have. So just put in the again the physical number of branches. Um, uh, the uh, num a numerical value, not NA, not TBD. And the third uh, tab here is just an, uh, an overall um, view of the various ratings that the three rating systems um, use, um, just in case you need a refresher or you need to look at it. They, they're listed there on that third tab uh, for you to peruse um, along with the definitions for each of those tabs. OK. All right. And I'll briefly talk about um, the Axway um, secure transport system. Um, it is uh, DOF's secure email service. Um, we ask that uh, when a bank wants to uh, send us their um, 
their documentation, their designation documentation, that they do so via Axway. Um, the reason for that is because Axway has no file limit, no file size limit. So you can transmit um, very large files in one shot. Um, Outlook, as you all know, has uh, specific size limits um, where you wouldn't be able to send a complete file. You'd have to break it up into multiple files. Um, and since the commission is asking for one uh, complete PDF document uh, for all of your um, information to be uh, put into one complete document um, and to be submitted that way, it will be a little easier to be able to submit it via Axway. OK, and I will blow this up as well. Let's see. All right. Now, notice it's a little hard to see. I will go through this relatively quickly. Um, this document was sent again to uh, to all of you on uh, the 13th of January when um, all the rest of the documents were sent with instructions on um, on how to uh, complete those documents and send it to uh, the commission for review. Basically, what this document is saying is that um, I sent you um, an uh, Axway email, or I sent uh, whoever you designated on your staff to be the point person um, an email from Axway. Um, that email does have a shelf life of 30 days. So it was sent on February 1st, which means that on March 1st, um, I believe at midnight, the email will expire. Right. So if you do need me to send you another email, um, I'm more than happy to just uh, email me um, and I will resend you a new Axway email uh, for you to use. And again, that mm -hmm. will also have a 30 day limit um, as well. So once you receive the email, um, you can upload all of your documents uh, into Axway doesn't matter the size because there's no size limit. You can upload all of your documents into it and then um, just press reply and it'll come right to us and we'll be able to download it and we will be all good and we'll review it. And if uh, you know we see that there are any documents that are missing or anything that's incomplete, you know, we will reach out to you um, and work with you with in regards to that. Um, if you need an extension, um, the commission will review all extension requests on a case by case basis. Um, the rules do state that the commission can at its discretion provide up to 15 days um, for an extension. So if you do need an extension, please email um, the banking commission mailbox at NYC banking commission. That's all one word. NYC Banking Commission at finance.nyc.gov and CC uh, Mary Christine, Hua, and myself. And the commission uh, will review your request and uh, we'll get back to you uh, with an answer. Okay. Again, um, if you do need an extension, uh, which can be given up to 15 days at the discretion of the commission, please email the Banking Commission mailbox at NYC Banking Commission, all one word, at finance.nyc.gov. CC myself, Antonio Whitaker, Hua Tan, and Mary Christine Jackman, and we will get back to you. Okay. If you have any issues opening an Axway email, for some of you on this call currently, I know that um, in the past, your respective firewalls have prevented Axway from opening on your computers. If you do have an issue, please email me, let me know, and we can work out some, uh, some alternate arrangement, okay? Um, so if you have an issue, please let me know, um, and uh, we can either uh, have you guys send something to us via your secure email, 
and then I guess we'll just piece everything together once uh, we receive it on our side, or we can work out some other arrangement. Okay. But we know, of course, no one's going to need an extension. That is the hope. <laughs> <laughs> but we fully understand that things happen. And again, the commission will review all extension requests on a case by case basis. Okay. So thank you all. I look forward to your questions. I know many of you have um, specific questions on um, some of the items that we had just mentioned, particularly with regards to the certificates. So I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Uh, Hua, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And then you can go ahead and put up the PowerPoint. OK. We're going to ask that if you do have a question that you use the raise your hand function at the top of the screen, please, so that we can do this in an orderly fashion. Are there any questions? All right, we have. Claire, uh, you could please unmute yourself and um, ask the question. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to thank you. This is Claire Cusack from the New York Bankers Association. Sort of hopped on to this. Uh, I want to uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, we represent a number of the banks that are going through this process, and this was incredibly helpful, uh, very practical information. So I appreciate you putting this together uh, for all of us. I know we all have a lot of questions. Um, just to go back, and I, I, I'm trying to be mindful of being efficient on my questions uh, that you, your request to make sure I, I, I two part question here. Um, number one is uh, there was a press release that went out about um, uh, about some changes to the process uh, a week or so ago or two weeks ago. Um, and in the press release, it talked about the certificates had been uh, quote unquote revised. Um, I think that's causing a little bit of confusion in that um, people want to understand what was revised. What can you walk through those revisions? Number one, um, and and let us know if there's any anything that's changed since the packet went out in January. Um, but then secondly, um, Hua, I think you you said um, something to the effect of the information that's included in that is going to be confidential and then subject to. All I heard was law. I wasn't know if there if you if you had a specific uh, law that you were talking about, and if you could talk about what what does that mean and what are the ex expectations for that uh, for that information. I think a lot of folks uh, concerned about um, submitting non-public information or or or, or um, information that's proprietary or competitive. So, what are the what's the expectation for that information? Where is it going to be used? Um, and what are those revisions? That's like a hundred questions at once. Sorry. <laughs> OK, well, the um, the question about the revisions, um, I think that what the press release was um, alluding to was the fact that now the certificates were we're making sure that the certificates are filed with the clerk and and previously um, that, as I mentioned, whenever a new administration takes over, people start rereading the laws and really re re revisiting the process. And this is actually in Title 22. So, um, so the revision part, maybe that wasn't a good good way to word it. Um, but everything that you've got is is exactly what um, what we need back. That nothing nothing has changed since we sent out the original. The only thing that happened was that the press release was a little bit late in in hitting the press, so to speak. Um, so, so that is. Um, that is exactly what it really means is that because Title 22 requires that these documents be filed this year, we're going to make sure that they are. And then um, we're, we're also joined um, with uh, by some of our legal colleagues, uh, Dara Jaffe and David Atik. Um, would either one of you want to comment on the, um, the legal question that Claire just asked? Um, hi, this is uh, David Atik. I I'm uh, joining by phone, so I can't tell if uh, if Dar is on currently. Okay. So, David, would you mind addressing that? Um, 
Uh, certainly. So if we've uh, said in the rules that um, uh, the submissions are uh, confidential, um, uh, I'll, I'll check if there are any additional rules, but it uh, says to me that if we received um, a Freedom of Information Law FOIL request, um, uh, we would uh, we would deny it under the uh, exceptions in the FOIL statute. Thank you, David. Does that help, Claire? Uh, yes, very much. I, I think the other the other part of that, and I don't know if you can answer this now, um, is is what that information is going to be used for. Um, again, it, it sounds like there haven't been many changes to it, so it's it, the expectation is is sort of similar to what you've had before, just a just an extra filing with the city clerk. Um, but correct. once it goes, yeah, once it goes to the city clerk, again, if that FOIL request goes to the city clerk, does the same thing apply? And and where you know what is that information used for at that office? If you can answer that, David. Um, uh, I think that probably um, uh, my office um, should be in touch with the city clerk to alert them um, because they're not part of the Department of Finance. So, so I think uh, we should alert them that um, if they receive FOIL requests, um, then the two, um, then they should coordinate with us. David, just so you know, we did have that conversation with them and they have agreed. Oh, OK, great. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did have that conversation. And so everything will be um, coordinated through us. And um, we, we did say that there are things that are confidential and we recognize that. Very helpful. Thank you. Yes. Anything else, Claire? <laughs> yeah, I, I, have, I have a lot of questions. I don't want to take up too much time. I, the other part of this um, that I think is new uh, for our folks to see uh, is the is the uh, public comment period, um, a written period leading up to the designation uh, day, and then um, and then some some oral testimony. It sounds like at the meeting itself. Um, I don't know if you can shed a little more light on that um, and and either how that came about, what you're expecting from that process, um, and again. Uh, how that information that's solicited from there is used. Um, the, the, it's public comment. Um, it was felt with the um, new um, comptroller that they would like to have more public input. And so the um, public comment period was was added. Um, people are welcome to to voice their their opinions and and make their comments but but i want to make it very clear that the banks are invited also and that we fully expect that the banks too will have public comments that they want to make um which will be we're, we're going to limit it to three minutes just so that it's it's uh, more um succinct um and and so this this would be an opportunity for some of our banking partners to talk about the wonderful things that they're doing in our communities. Got it. Um, that's very helpful. I guess I, I'm just a, I'm just a little confused. We were talking about the um, I, uh, that that the this is all based on uh, the ability of the banks to be able to hold uh, money safely and soundly. Um, exactly. I think, right. <laughs> right. I exactly. Think. That's the our. Our focus, our concern is that the city monies are held safely, soundly in fiscally responsible organizations, um, that that is our focus. And um, we we recognize we recognize that, you know, there's there's business practices that people don't understand. And and we definitely need we definitely need fine organizations like those here today to please step forward and to help us. That's that's what we're really looking for. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I'll let somebody else have a turn here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> hey, um, Mary Christine Juan, um, 
before we entertain another question, I just want to make a comment before before I forget, um, <clears throat> if I may. Of course. So um, for um, folks that are going for the folks on the call um, who are um, who were designated to you know, put together the um, designation uh, packets to be sent to the commission. Um, I do ask that um, you do not password protect any of your documents um, because it um, will belabor the process and, it, and uh, you know, we, we, we would have to reach out to you to get the correct passwords. Several of us, um, on the commission staff will need to have access to those documents in order to review them. So we do ask uh, that you do not password protect any of your documents when they are sent. Um, also, that goes for both the uh, PDF uh, document, the full application, as well as the um, designation requirements checklist spreadsheet, okay? Also, with regards to the certificates, they do need to be physically signed. Um, the commission cannot accept an electronic signature on those documents. Those documents need to be wet signed and, date, and dated. Um, so they need to be physically signed. Thank you, Antonio. Additional questions? And if you guys have any questions, please use the raise hand icon and we'll get those questions and Sophia. And another thing, ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> this is coming to me fast and furious. <clears throat> and I know some of you have probably thought about this. Um, in our instructions, the instructions that were sent to you back in January, it does say that both the for the um, for the items the uh, the items 10, 11, and 16 for those uh, respective certificates that need to be filed with both the city clerk's office and with the commission, right? Um, those items, all all five of the certificates, right, need to be again wet signed, and the supporting documents also need to be included. So for the three um certificates that need to also go to the city clerk's office um you would need to basically um make two copies of those documents right so you'd have to um for say item 10 for example you'd have to print out uh two copies of that certificate wet sign both and then make sure one of them is submitted with your larger packet that comes to the big commission and another pack and another one which will be filed with the city clerk's office. OK, so that goes for items 10, 11 and 16. OK, if you have additional questions um, uh, on this, uh, feel free to to email either myself or or Hua or Mary Christine. Um, if you know if you get stuck or if something happens after this call uh, when you're putting together the documents, but just remember that for those three items, you're you're just going to have to do a double duty on those. Can you tell that Antonio's been doing this for um, eight years? Can can you tell that he can see all of the uh, things that can happen? Yes, um, I have bags. <laughs> Claire, you had another question. I do. Me again over here, Antonio. I'm sorry. You keep coming, coming, coming at us with very practical information. I, this is another question about the hearing, if you don't, if you don't mind, um, or at least the public comments. Um, a couple of questions. Um, has the written comment period opened, or when, when will it open? Um, and how will people know when it's open? Um, and then finally, um, or, or additionally. Um, can you can you give us a little bit more about the format of the hearing if you know it just yet or the meeting itself? Um, you said three minutes per per person. It sounds like it sounds like it's just one, right? There's only going to be one for for all of the. It's not going to be about each designee, I assume. Um, and then, uh, is there going to be a question and answer of each person? Sorry, these are all coming at me too. Um, it's it's actually the way we're envisioning it is that it's going to just be a comment period, um, that 
people will only have three minutes maximum to to make a statement or to um, to make a comment. Um, and and that's that's our anticipation is that it it will be very limited, very controlled. Um, so so no Q and A or anything. It's just a statement and then comment period. Comment period. Hua, well, can you um, sh share the um, uh, go to the begging commission website? I want everyone to call to see. Um, uh, our uh, the commission web page on the DOF website and where the meeting notice is. Okay. Do you have the website up? Uh, it's it's fine. You know, why don't you stop sharing? Um, I'll share my screen. All right. OK, so Claire, here is and for everyone on the call, here is um, the uh, landing page for the Banking Commission on the um, Department of Finance website. Um, you can easily it, get there just to yeah. NYC Banking Commission. It, it'll right. it'll take you right there. Right. It's very bare bones. I know a lot of folks um, over the years have been um, concerned about um, any information that they provide to the commission, whether or not the commission publicly publishes that information. And uh, to answer your question, um, the commission does not, right? We would not ever publish any um, information uh, or make public any information without um, someone having to go through um, the FOIL process as um, Mr. Teak had mentioned earlier in his comments. OK, this is our website is very bare bones and it has been for a number of years because we want every we want everybody to just get to the to the meat and potatoes, right? So we basically have what the commission does, who's on it, and this is what um, and this is probably what you wanted, to, what you would need to see is where we have our meetings and hearings, right? So currently we have set up, um, we have set the dates for our two hearings. The one that um, the the May 25th hearing is the meeting um, where the commission will get together to um, vote on uh, which banks will become designated, right? So there is an agenda here. So if we click on that. OK, I'll blow this up. So this agenda is a working document. It can change based on um, you know, uh, based on whether or not the commission will take up additional business, but currently um, this is the agenda that the commission has set for that specific date. As you can see, um, there is um, uh, a portion of the meeting um, where we will have public comment before uh, the banking commission uh, formally votes on which banks can become official depositories. So as Mary Christine had mentioned, um, you know, we will limit the um, uh, 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 limit uh, any comments to three minutes. We hope that um, the uh, folks represented on this call um, that uh, that they will come by and uh, and say something um, as well and give public comment. Um, we think that it's important that not only should the public be able to have their say, uh, but um, the banks that are vying to become official depositories should be able to um, to come in and, and, and uh, have their say um, as well. So again, this is the current agenda. It can change from here and from now uh, until May 25th, but currently this is um, the agenda that um, is set. Uh, we have set some time aside for public comment just in case we have a decent amount of people. But, um, you know, but uh, this is it. So and it, it'll be, you know, again, very structured. You know, you know folks will come in, they'll, they'll say what they want, um, and then the next person will go. You know, it's it's basically just a, a your run of the mill uh, public uh, public information session. OK, all right. 
Thank you. Very helpful. Just to clarify, so the, the designation will happen immediately following that, it looks like. Correct. Thank you. Does someone else have? Um... Yes, Antonio, we have a question on the chat box. Uh, let me read this. Uh, it's from Lee. Actually, it's not a question. It's just a. Actually, yes, it is a question. Oh, I apologize. Go oh, ahead. you see it? Okay. Okay. Uh, my point person in this process is also apologize if this is repetitive. The actual submission pages need wet sig ink signature or would a scan version of a wet ink signature be acceptable to submit with each documentation package addressing a requirement? The wet signature will be on the original, and um, there has to be the wet signature on all of the certificates. And then when you're loading it, naturally it's going to be a scan version. As long as the city clerk's office gets the physically signed document, at least for the three certificates that the uh, city clerk needs, right? That will be sufficient. The clerk's office will let us know um, when um, when a bank has submitted their documentation. So um, so we'll so we'll get notification of that. But as long as the clerk's office gets those physically signed documents, we understand that once you sign a document, you scan it. You know, obviously it won't be wet anymore, but it'll be a scanned version of that, and that will be acceptable for the commission. Thank you, Lee. Um, next question. Do you need the wet signature of all five certificates mailed to the Banking Commission? As long as you're loading them into the into the um, Axeway. And it's the scanned version will be good. Yes, so um, so we here at the Department of Finance, we don't require um, any paper of any kind. Um, we're good with um, your scan documents sent to us. Um, you know, it uh, it's it's totally fine. We um, did away with paper a few years ago. It just makes it a lot easier. It's a little bit uh, better for the environment as well. So um, so we don't require. Um, anything to be physically mailed uh, to us here at the Department of Finance, but for the city clerk's office, yes, they will require physical, um, physical, physical signed documents. Um, they will. You need to uh, give them all the paper that they ask for, but they will require that. Mary Christine, would um, would that be a good time to address the um, the proprietary issue with I, regards I, to? I believe that I believe um, David already did that. Okay. I believe David already did that. Okay. OK, will a URL link meet the financial information requirement or must all pages include in PDF? From please, you, please, please give us the URL. Please, your, your annual statements are delightful and wonderful, but to copy all of that in is a little bit extensive. So if you've got the URL link, that would be fabulous for your financials. Um, that would be absolutely fine. Well, Mary Christine, well, that's great. Um, I think that for staff, we would um, we would also like to have the the paper only because again, everything needs to be in um, one comprehensive document. I understand that you know financials could be thousands of pages. I get it, which is the whole reason why um, you know we would rather folks use Axway as opposed to um, their own uh, secure uh, email services. But um, 
having done this for as long as I have, um, a URL is great. You can include that, but I would also like for the paper um, for the physical statement to be included in, in the PDF document, um, just in case the URL doesn't work or it's a broken link or something has or, 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 or something or other has happened. It's happened in the past where we've had to go and try to find what we need. Um, it's a lot easier for us to just receive it. Even if it's a large document, we know what to look for and we know where to go. So um, so staff, commission staff would appreciate um, you including um, the physical document as part of the, uh, the PDF. Um, I don't see any more questions at this time. Any other questions out there that we could help you address? No. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for giving us all of your time and your attention. We really appreciate it. You know where we are. Uh, if you need anything else, if you if you have a question that you want to ask that's unique to your organization, please let us know. Um, and we look forward to receiving all of your wonderful submissions. And we look forward to partnering with you in the future. Thank you so much. Also, before we before we go, this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Banking Commission website. So if you have colleagues that want to review um, our responses, you can refer them to the Banking Commission webpage. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you.